when a component uh, is subjected to stresses that vary with time, it's likely to fail at stress, stresses much lower than the static strength of the material. This phenomena is termed fatigue, and fatigue is responsible for approximately 90% of all service failures. To mitigate against fatigue, we must determine the properties, the fatigue properties of the material. Three such properties are the SN test, the low circle fatigue test, and the fatigue crack growth test, which we are going to demonstrate. We start with the SN test. The SN test is also called the rating bedding test. And in this test, we determine, we take a specimen, load it until it fails, and determine the stress S against the number of circles that is required to cause the specimen to fail, which is N. Now, from this, the SN curve of the material, S for stress, N for number of circles, is plotted, and uh, from this we determine the endurance limit of the material, sigma endurance. Sigma endurance is that stress below which the material will not fail. This is the SN uh, test. The specimen is of this form, yeah? and we are going to apply a bending moment on it while rotating it. In that way, the stress varies from a maximum positive value to a maximum negative value. Now, in the machine, the specimen is there, and we are going to rotate it. We are going to set the stress and rotate it until it fails. When the specimen fails, we will record the stress that we have used against the number of circles that it takes to fail. When, that, when one specimen is done, we will repeat the same specimen, we will repeat the same experiment with a different specimen but with a lower stress. And we will continue doing this until we reach a level at which specimen does not fail. We, we plot, at the end of the day, we plot a graph showing the stress against the number of circles to failure. That is called the SN curve. The second of the test is the low circle fatigue test. This involves situations where the number of stress circles to failure is low and hence the name low circle fatigue. It is similar to the first case, but instead of the stress range, we plot the strain range delta epsilon, and this is plotted against the number of circles to failure n. The purpose is to determine the value of delta epsilon at which failure will not occur. The form of the specimen is as shown. The idea here is to apply a bending moment and the way the specimen is shaped, the highest stress will be the neck there. Now, the difference here is that we vary the strain range, not the stress range. And so, the machine is here, and each of these are designed such that they give a different amount of displacement. A different amount of displacement means a different strain on the specimen. Again, we run the specimen, we run the machine. And we record until the specimen fails. We record again the number of circles in which the failure takes place against the strain. Now, we plot the strain range against the number of circles to failure. Finally, in fatigue crack growth tests, here the, the growth of a fatigue crack is monitored. The specimen with the crack is loaded, and the length of the crack A is determined as a function of the number of stress circles N. Now, from a plot of A versus N, 
the fatigue crack growth rate, the ADN, is determined. This is plotted against the driving force, which is delta K. K is the stress intensity factor, and it's a function of both the crack length and the stress. The properties obtained from uh, the plot are delta K threshold and the range of the rate of crack growth. Delta K threshold is the value of delta K at which, below which a crack will not grow. In this test, the specimen looks like this. Now the specimen has got a crack already. And in this case here, what we are going to measure is the rate at which that crack grows. So we are going to apply a, tensile, a varying tensile load to the specimen and we monitor the length of the crack. The length of the crack will be monitored by a traveling microscope. By moving that traveling microscope, which has a vernier, we are able to measure the length of the crack. And against that, we record the number of circles uh, that, that have elapsed. And we continue until there is either the specimen breaks or there is gross section yielding. Now this machine is also built, designed and built by us here 